Hello, and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now we're, we're up on an estuary bank, it's early morning. We're out to see if we can find some bass and some bring. Now it's still very early on in the season. tide's going in that direction and you'll see I've got three rods out the two shorter ones I've just got a very simple running ledger now, as simple as you can get it's just a lead on a slider a hook length with either a 1-0 cox and roll chino or a 1-0 yeah, I think it's a specimen extra and all I'm using is razor clamp and ragworm as baits on the taller rod I'm having a bit of an experiment. I'm using a, uh, a rig called a Dyson rig. And when I bring it in, I will show you. But basically, it's got a float which lifts your bait up off the bottom. I've only been here about 15 minutes, and already I've had I've had two fish. I've had one on the running ledger and one on the Dyson rig. So the Dyson rig, I'm glad to see, is working. Now, I didn't manage to get them on camera. I hadn't set up yet. I always like to get set up first and fishing before I turn the camera on. See a cormorant down there in the distance. This is what we've had up and up so far. See there, look, you see the chino in its mouth. There's one. Not a bad start, is it? Cracking fish. Now I've just had these in a bucket of water to show you. I'm gonna go now. The, uh, the bites were really savage. So all I've got here is a. See here, all I've got is. That a foot and a half of a uh, 20 pound flow rope and a 1 0 chino, and all I'd done was I just threaded a couple of ragworm up that hook. The, um, when you're fishing for bream and bass like this, you need to fish with a very light drag set on the rod. A bass bite is usually like a knocking bite, whereas a bream bite can anything from like a little peck. I like a screaming run. I pick the bit up and they're just legging. So if your drag's too tight and they feel any resistance in the drop, it's better to fish with either a bait runner or a light drag. And all you do is when it when it runs, you pick the rod up, then hold the spool, set the hook, and tighten your drag. Hopefully, I'll get to show you. But like I say, it's really early on in the season. Maybe you give it a month or two before I properly start. Standing at a base on this one. Now I have got the drag this light, so if a fish picks it up, it can run to the drag. More of a, a pecking bite like a bass. all the rig is just a sliding ledger now that was just just a little schooly bite I could tell because as soon as I hit the fish it was only only like rattling a bream is like a solid boom. <laughs> oh this is a micro bass One's not a PB. We've always got loads of attitude, these little spikies. Rolled still. 
These are usually the ones you get the most spikes from as well, riding around and thrashing. A cracking little fish. Come on, calm down. There you go. Took a bunch of ragworm. There you go. There you go, a one or specimen extra. All it was is I've got these rods set with the bait damp tied and they're just gently, bound, gently bending into the tide. So all I got then was on the rod tip I just got like a... So I knew there was a fish there so I lifted it out of the holder and pointed it down tide to let it have a little bit of slack and as soon as I got another pull I set the hook into it. I've already got a few ragworm on there but I'll, I'll thread one more up just to show you how I'm doing it. hold onto the ragworm in the middle with its head pointing up and all you do is you just thread the hook point from its head and thread the worm up the hook like that. There you go. Dead simple. And like I say the drag is that tight. set it that tight is because if a brain picks you up it will tear off and it can be quite finicky as well if they feel any resistance they can sometimes drop a bit and I don't want that I want to have it properly in their mouth and pass it down. Just getting a bite on this one over here. Tighten down the drag a bit. See it? They're getting slightly bigger. Open wide. There you go. Oh, he's mullered that. I have to get the forceps on that one. Let's get him in this bucket of water, let him calm down first. This is another one of the reasons why I always have my traces, my hook lengths, on a snap. So all you need to do is just disconnect one like that, you can put the fish in the bucket, and then you just pick up a pre-baited one, clip it straight on, and you're ready to go again. Not sure. There was a fish there, but there isn't any more. Still plenty of bait. Just playing with it, might even be a small one. Yeah, what I'm waiting for is to just hear one of the dragons go zzzz, and a decent brain picks it up. set the hook into another really shy bite there. There we go again. Another little spike, eh? Yeah. Although it was a shy bite, he swallowed it again. I'm going to get the forceps on it. Right, at least the fish are biting. I had literally just cast this out and put it in the holder and I'm going to bite it. Sure, a little, a little bass sat behind the boat. Literally just cast out 
just put the bail arm over and sat it in the holder and the rod tip was going. You keep an eye on it for me. There's that. That one was taken on the specimen extra. See, this is our bait up with razor clamp. All I've done is I've just cut like a two inch section and just threaded it up the hook. And all I'm going to do is just give it a real light whipping of bait elastic. And all this is for is um, to stop it dropping down over the bend of the hook. So I'll give the top a little bit of a whipping around the eye. Like that. And just a real light lashing that way it holds onto the hook like that and it keeps the hook point proud I was just about to say that we're going to pull up the anchor and we're going to go because the tide's swinging round that much now that we're covering like 180 degrees and literally the rod just went Supreme. <laughs> I wasn't going to risk lifting that one aboard. I just had a bite a minute ago on that really light rod and I th it was like a couple of real heavy nods like that and when I lifted in I just didn't have enough in the rod to be able to set the hook and as I will show you Bream have got quite hard mouths and here Easy, 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 calm down. They have got quite a few spines on them. All of these on here have got a spike on them, and they've got one at the back of their gill. But this here is why they're called the gilt head. Crackers, aren't they? If you can see the teeth. They're like little people teeth, aren't they? Proper like crushing pads for crushing up crabs and shells. Come on, let go. Let go. There you are. Put him in that bucket of water. Now bream are a shoaling fish. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking to you now. I'm going to these baits back out because there might be some more. Once he's recovered in that bucket of water, we'll have a photo and we'll let him go. There he is, recovered. He's a cracking looking fish, isn't he? Oh, that spiking, mate. You see, look there on his head. That's why he's called the gilt head. Yeah, stunning. Got all loads of colours on him. Them teeth. Them teeth are hilarious, aren't they? The wind's howling now and we're swinging about all over the place, we're just, tide's slackened off, we're just coming up to high water and the wind's taking over the tide so we are swinging about. I'll just explain to you this Dyson rig that I've been using. Now it's, um, it's a rig that I learned a couple of months ago, a friend of mine called Steve Dorr taught it to me and it's, it's a predator rig using coarse fishing. He uses it 
for eels. You can use it for perch as well. I don't know if you can see, this is it. You have a float with a length and a lead. And down from that, you have a cup. Now this at the minute, I'm just messing around because I thought there might have been little black bream around because I was getting little tiny pecking bites. So I made up like a little tiny dropper. But ideally all I would have was I would just have a single hook length like that. And the plan is, is that if the current is running this way, so your rig will be laid out like that, this float keeps this off the bottom and in the current. Now this is, this is too long. Ideally you would want something like that long. So all that happens is this sits up in the current away from the crabs and because there's a float you leave the line slack. Every little bump and movement of the rod tip from the boat or the waves causes the float to bob which causes the bait to flutter. Now I've had two schooly bass on this today. I'm not 100% sold on it and it'll work in this scenario but that's because there's a little bit too much wind and movement. On a day where you were sat and it's just perfectly behind the boat all I would do is I would sit the rod high so that the float is sitting high. If you tighten up too much it'll just sink it. But this is what I'm experimenting with at the moment. And it's called the Dyson rig. Now when I go do some more perch fishing and things like that you will see this rig again. Just trialing it out with a bit of a bit of salt water action. There you go. I wondered how long it would be before these guys turned up. And up just a sliding ledger. Buggers, eh? Greedy buggers. We're going to try and find a little bit of shelter, anchor somewhere else. Maybe give it another hour. And then we're go on. Right, well, the wind's picking up all the time. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I brought my hat and my fleece today because it's it's pretty nippy. I've got some dark clouds in the horizon. I'm not going to hang around to get rained on. Mm -hmm. We've had the best of the tide. It's uh, it's like slack water now. Right at top of tide. So the wind's just swinging as well. I've managed to hold her in position by putting a stern anchor out as well. But it's just it's a lot of hassle and, and the fishing's knocked off as well. Target species though. Got your bream and got your bass which is always fantastic. I always love it when a plan comes together. They are cracking fish, them built and breams. They, they fight really well for the size and they just look stunning. Yeah, the rigs today I used was a sliding ledger rig. Just like an ounce, maybe an ounce and a half of lead. And either a 1 0 specimen extra or a 1 0 cox and roll chino. The, uh, the baits were ragworm and razor clam. The best bait for today actually was just ragworm on its own, which is why it often pays. To, uh, to try a couple of different baits to start with just to see which is working best on that day. It is early on in the season. I mean, we're generally, when the bluebells come out, I think that's the time to start thinking about bream. But I am uh, another month, month and a half, and they'll, they should be here in, in force. I just thought I'd chance my arm. It was a nice enough day. I had a couple of, sp a couple of free hours, so I thought I'd give it a crack. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I, I hope there's been some useful hints and tips in there. Um, please, if you think your friends would like the video as well, share it on. Get them to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification button. That way you will get any updates when I bring my new videos out. Uh, I wish you all the very best and have a nice day.